Hey, let's talk a moment about one of the most underrated types of people. A type of person who doesn't get celebrated and unfortunately, we don't tend to fully appreciate this person until they're gone. This is the trustworthy person. You see, we applaud those who take big risks or we give attention to the loudest person in the room at the time, but there's something to be said about a trustworthy person. Someone who faithfully obeys God and loves others over the course of many years. Trustworthy people are few and far between. Now, this isn't new. In fact, the writer of Proverbs describes this scenario this way, saying many a person proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy person? The proverb uses a rhetorical question to point out the difference between what we profess versus what is reality. In other words, those who say they are committed to something is different than those who actually are. Now, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. In fact, maybe you found yourself in a low spot in your life, an area of struggle, and very few of your supposed friends actually showed up. It's like those people who had told you they had your back were too busy to be there when you needed them the most. Now, maybe I'm poking one of your bruises right now, and before you go on a mental rant saying everyone is selfish and no one can be trusted anymore, I want you to stop for a moment and consider to be that trustworthy person yourself. I know this kind of sounds like Gandhi's famous, be the change you want to see in this world. And I guess in some ways, that's what I'm trying to say. But I want to challenge you to choose to be trustworthy. Now, I want to give you a couple marks of a trustworthy person that we can practically live out in our own lives. You see, a trustworthy person is two different things. They're reliable and long-suffering. To be trustworthy means you're reliable. You see, there's a story told of Sam Finley who decided it was time to retire from his garment business. So he called in his son, Mervyn, and gave him some advice saying, son, this is all yours. I've made a success of this business because of two principles, reliability and wisdom. First, take reliability. If you promise goods by the 10th of the month, you must deliver by the 10th, even if it costs you overtime, double time, or golden time. You deliver what you promise. Now, the son thought about it for a few moments. Then he asked his dad, well, what about wisdom? And his father shot back, wisdom is never having made such a stupid promise. You see, a trustworthy person is a person of their word. They show up when they say they will. Now, practically speaking, this means showing up on time. Now, I know each personality type is different. Some of you, if you show up right on time, you feel like you're late. Now, others of you kind of have this word ish that you use a lot, like I'll be there at noon ish. So you may have a bit harder time with this. But being trustworthy says, I'm going to show up when promised because when I'm late, I'm disrespecting the other person's time. So to be reliable, means you show up on time and you're true to your word. Jesus taught once saying that you shouldn't have to swear that you'll do something. He says you should be so trustworthy that all you need to say is simply yes or no. Trustworthy people show up when they say they will. They are reliable. Now secondly, a trustworthy person is long suffering. Now, I was going to use the word consistent here, but I think the word long suffering is a more accurate term because it means that they're in it for the long haul, that they show up over and over again, even when it's tough. Now, can I be off the cuff for a moment? This past year of the pandemic was not so easy in the church world. It sucked. We made decisions that we believed to be the right ones, erring on the side of safety, and we made some tough decisions to um, suspend our, our in person services in December. Now, a little insider information December is a big month for the church. It's like there's this thing called Christmas, and it was a tough decision that required sacrifice. But what the hardest part of it was the aftermath. Some bailed ship and decided to leave our church. Now that still stinks. You see, here's the thing. A trustworthy person is in it for the long haul. Will you decide to stick with others even when they're unlovable or making stupid decisions? Will you still show up even when you don't feel like it? You see, another proverb tells us, a friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. You see, it's in times of trouble that you see the value of having family, but it's also in those difficulties that you see who your true friends are. I want to end by sharing an example in the Bible of someone who epitomizes what it means to be trustworthy. In fact, it's someone that you might not have heard about very much. In fact, there's only six verses verses that even mention her, but she made a huge impact. In Acts chapter 9, we're told that in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, and in Greek, her name was Dorcas. I like the name. Tabitha better personally. But anyways, um, look how she's described. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Now that's a pretty good way to be described. You see what happens though is she ends up getting sick and dying and the people there were distraught by it. And they call the church leader Peter to come and we're told that Peter went with them. And when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. Now notice how the scene is described. It says all the widows stood around him crying and showing him all the robes and other clothing that Dorcas, Tabitha, had made while she was still with them. Now this is a lady who had huge impact. She was trustworthy over a long period of time. She showed up in the lives of people around her and she died and she left a gap. Now basically what happens next in the story is an incredible miracle. 
Peter actually prays intently and, and calls to her, get up. And she opens up her eyes and she sat up. And then we're told that Peter took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. And then he called for the believers, especially the widows. Now, Tabitha was a hero to these widows. And he presented to her to them alive. Now, what the world needs is more Tabithas. You see, God isn't looking for the spectacular or the loudest, most confident person in the room. He applauds the one who chooses to be faithful, to reliably show up in other people's lives over the long haul. May you and I be that trustworthy person.